to move forward. See, so we were discussing about measuring standard electrode potentials and uh, the E0 values to be obtained by connecting any half cell with standard hydrogen electrode she. <laughs> now, whenever I say the name she, <laughs> it comes to my, my mind that Kuzama was not able uh, to fathom the she as a start. And she, he told us at the end of the lecture that I couldn't understand why do, do you keep saying she? <laughs> All right, so in order to connect she and half cell together, we have three scenarios. A metal and metal half ion half cell can be connected with she, or a non metal, non metal ion half cell can be connected to she, or an ion ion half cell can be connected to she. As the first scenario considered first, half cells which contain metal and metal ions, and when they are connected to she, we had two examples. One with copper ion and copper half cell when connected to she. In this case, the diagram is given over here as we are supposed to go with the E standard value. So all the conditions which are supposed to be at standard. For example, the copper ions are supposed to be one mole per decimeter cube solution and same goes for the hydrogen ions as one mole per decimeter cube solution. First part of standard rule. Then the second rule was temperature to be standard that we can see here over here as 298 Kelvin. Then third, part of the standards were to have any gases at one atmospheric pressure or one, uh, one, uh, one uh, uh, actually kilopascals. So it's the same one atmosphere pressure. And lastly, they're supposed to be properly connected. The whole system is supposed to be properly connected uh, with Xi in such a way that the outer circuit is connected through the wires and uh, there is a high resistance voltmeter over there and then the part of the circuit so the solutions is actually connected with an inverted u-shaped salt bridge the salt bridge usually consists of an immovable gel that consists of some salt such as potassium nitrate or potassium fluoride right so this so far is something that we already studied now i give you the idea that we can uh, go with the discussion of these equations and talking about which of the electrodes would become the cathode and which one would become the anode i mean which one will have the reduction reaction and the oxidation reaction respectively so in order to do that either we can talk about in respect to the reactivity series that we have previously studied in IGCSC and anything on top of hydrogen in that series will tend to become the anode and hydrogen will then become the cathode. Okay. But if there is anything that is present at the bottom of uh, the series, uh, then hydrogen would become the cathode and that thing would become the anode all right so as you can see the cathodes are usually negatively charged uh, which causes the cations to be attracted and go with the reduction process and anodes are positively charged usually and which allow the anions to go with the oxidation process in this case okay so in case of uh, anode over here the anions are Actually, the copper atoms are converted into ions by losing the electrons. So copper becomes the anode over here and hydrogen becomes the cathode, right? So that is the case over here. And here we can see that hydrogen will gain electron uh, and the copper will lose electron. Wait a second. Yeah, I'm saying the same. But equations is a part of the convention is actually written in the reduction form. Hence, we can see copper over here in reduction form with plus 0.34 volts and hydrogen over here uh, with zero volts. Now, in this case, if we don't talk about the reactivity, instead we go with these equations, then these equations, according to electrochemistry that we have studied in this chapter, not from the previous knowledge of IGCSC, it go, goes by this rules. Now, the E0 value shows us that copper ions are easier to reduce than hydrogen ions. They have a more positive value as plus 0.34 volts are quoted over here. Hence, copper ions are more likely to gain electrons than hydrogen ions. So they will tend to gain electrons and they will go with the reduction process. Sorry, sorry I might have been wrong in the previous sentence when I was thinking with whether I what I was saying is right or not. But 
there was one sentence in which I was considering copper as anode, but in fact, the copper is cathode over here. And the copper ions will accept electrons from hydrogen ion, ion hydrogen half cell, and hydrogen will lose electrons and it would become the anode. Take care. According to this, when we compare it with zinc, the zinc cell is also taken for all the same condition. The zinc ions are present in one mole per decimeter cube concentration. The hydrogen ions are also present in the one mole per decimeter cube concentration to 98 Kelvin is the standard temperature. The hydrogen is present at a standard pressure of one atmospheric. And in this case, the case is somewhat reverted. As you can see, the values for uh, hydrogen and zinc are in such a way that hydrogen gives zero volt value for E standard and zinc gives minus seven, 0 0.76 volts for E standard. Then we can see from these values that zinc is difficult to reduce. So zinc won't go with a reduction process. It, instead, it would pr prefer the oxidation process and loss of electrons. So zinc is less likely to gain electrons than hydrogen ions, and hydrogen are more likely to gain electrons than hydrogen tends to go with the reduction process here, over here. So zinc electrode will become the anode, and hydrogen electrode will become the cathode. And hence, uh, this in this case, the values for hydrogen zero and zinc minus 0 0.76 helps us to consider which one's anode, which one's cathode, and how the process will proceed from one electrode to another. Okay. So in these examples, what do we get? We get reduction taking place at positive terminal of the cell in case of zinc ions, zinc and hydrogen cell, and oxygen taking place at negative terminal of the cell in this case. So we also get the idea. He's giving the idea only for zinc over here so that you can also perceive the same thing in an opposite way as zinc cell is opposite to copper cell in this case, in the opposite way for the copper cell. Okay. Are we clear so far with the example? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. That means you can, of course, do question number 12 uh, from the question part on your own. Take a, take a look at question number 12. Here we have iron ions and iron half cell, chromium ions and chromium half cell, silver, silver ions and silver half cell over here. And for all of these cells, you can of course write uh, both half cell equations over here for hydrogen and for silver or for chromium or for iron over here. And you can compare these uh, in order to understand the whole thing. Not just that, the C part of the question list uh, asks you to list all the necessary condition in each cell. And of course, for these cells, the conditions, all the conditions are not mentioned over here. Take a look at these cells. You will come to know that only the temperature condition and the connection with standard hydrogen electrode condition are mentioned over here. However, the concentration conditions and the pressure conditions are not mentioned in any of the diagrams in this question. So you are supposed to mention that. Okay. Uh, just as a part of practice. So let's see. Fuzema, why don't we start with you? Fuzema, what would be uh, the pressure in, K in uh, the units of ATMs for hydrogen in these diagrams? I don't know, I'm here. अल्लाह के बंदे ये हम आईजीसीएसई से करते हैं एक मिनट से एक मिनट से याद करने दे मुझे भी याद नहीं आ रहा पढ़ क्या बेटा कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है आपके सामने बुक ओपन है इस वक्त क्वेश्चन क्या था सर आपका ये आपके सामने बुक ओपन है आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट कम टू पेज नंबर 282 ऑन द बुक ऑन पेज नंबर 282 ऑन द बुक पिक एनी डायग्राम फ्रॉम द दैट पेज एंड ऑन दैट डायग्राम Try to see with hydrogen what is the pressure quoted, and the same pressure would be considered over here as standard pressure. So, what's the pressure? One atm. One atm, right? One atmospheric is the standard pressure to calculate E standard or E naught values. Are you clear with the question as well as the answer, Kuzema? I just say that we are. राइट राइट ये तो वो ही पुरानी बात है ठीक है ना इवन जिस पेज पे हम हैं इस वक्त 283 जो आपकी स्क्रीन पे भी नजर आ रहा है उसके राइट हैंड साइड पे भी जो डायग्राम है उसमें वो वैल्यूज कोटेड है ठीक है ना क्वेश्चन लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे हाँ 
राइट हैंड वो हमने देखा नहीं ना लेकिन अगर आप देखेंगे तो ई नॉट और ई स्टैंडर्ड एवरी टाइम इज कैलकुलेटेड विद द सेम फोर सेट ऑफ कंडीशन ठीक है ना वन इज टेम्परेचर द सेकेंड वन इज प्रेशर द थर्ड वन इज कॉन्सेंट्रेशन एंड द फोर्थ वन इज द प्रॉपर कनेक्शन विद शी स्टैंडर्ड हाइड्रोजन इलेक्ट्रोड सो कमिंग टू द सेकेंड क्वेश्चन माई सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज फॉर आयशा Aisha ne hand raise kar diye chale Aisha you can ask the question first and then i'm going to ask the question from you ji Aisha nahi nahi sir maine galti se kiya hai maine jaan mujhe nahi kiya sorry ab main mute unmute karna tha to so, so can i ask you the question yes sir puch le okay Aisha how about uh, the concentration conditions for any of the part of this diagram let's discuss the concentration conditions for chromium half sir Um, what would be the concentration of chromium ions in this beaker on in the blue beaker once again the answer is also present on page number 283 in the book and page number 282 in the book so on the same page on the same screen the answer is there so it's very easy and let aisha answer the question nobody else is supposed to answer the question आयशा बेशक अपनी बुक से देख ले नहीं तो इस वक्त जो सामने स्क्रीन नजर आ रही है उसमें भी आंसर मौजूद है द राइट हैंड साइड डायग्राम इज एक्चुअली तुम्हारे पूछी गई सर क्या आपने पूछे कंसंट्रेशन कंडीशंस व्हाट वुड बी द कंसंट्रेशन इन द यूनिट्स ऑफ मोल पर डेसीमीटर क्यूब फॉर क्रोमियम सॉल्यूशन इन द सिस्टम सर पता नहीं ओके कैन यू सी द डायग्राम ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ द स्क्रीन Yes, sir. What is the uh, concentration in that diagram? Sorry. The two ninety eight Kelvin, not one atm. Better two ninety eight Kelvin is the temperature. One atm is the so, pressure. Pressure one atm or conditions per hour? No, sir. Sorry, my boss. Two ninety eight Kelvin or one atm pressure. Ha ha. This all will be done. That's why step by step there are four conditions that are a must for calculation of E standard. ठीक है ना दैट्स व्हाई आई एम डिस्कसिंग दोस कंडीशंस वन बाय वन ठीक है टेंपरेचर हर डायग्राम पे 298 केल्विन लिखा हुआ है आई कांट आस्क यू द टेंपरेचर दैट्स रिटन ऑन एवरी सिंगल डायग्राम ऑन दिस पेज देयर आर फोर डायग्राम्स ऑन दिस पेज ऑन योर स्क्रीन राइट नाउ एवरी डायग्राम हैज टेंपरेचर कोटेड एट द बॉटम ऑफ द डायग्राम 298 केल्विन सो आई कांट आंसर आस्क दैट क्वेश्चन दैट्स टू इजी टू आंसर ठीक है एंड एवरी सिंगल डायग्राम ऑन दिस पेज इज आल्सो कनेक्टेड विद स्टैंडर्ड हाइड्रोजन इलेक्ट्रोड so the, the second set of the rule the second rule in that set actually is also there as a part of every diagram so i can't ask you that so the only two things i can so ask you is the answer ye hai ki 1 mole per decimeter cube 1 mole per decimeter cube but that is the answer to the chromium uh, let's take a look main se annotate kar deta hu properly aisha to ask the question this blue beaker as you can see with the spotlight will have a concentration of chromium ions 1 mole per decimeter cube let's come to the beaker on the right hand side what would be the concentration of h positive or hydrogen ions in the right hand side beaker aisha beta so unki bhi sir 1 mole uski bhi 1 mole per decimeter cube very good very good answer dono 1 mole per decimeter cube hone chahiye are we all clear ji yes, sir so uh, revising again there are four sets of condition that are a must temperature 298 kelvin if there is a gas involved the gas should be at the pressure of one atmospheric then comes the solutions the solutions should be at the concentration of one mole per decimeter cube for every solution in the system no matter how many solutions are there or no matter which solution is there okay and lastly uh, that is temperature i think concentration concentration one mole per decimeter cube for concentration i think i just said that so connecting with she standard hydrogen electrode that is the last condition so temperature pressure concentration and a connection to she for the calculation of e not or e standard values okay so this diagram talks about it all that way you can answer question number 12 actually i have answered question number 12 mostly for you so then let's come to the second part the part for today half cells containing non metal and non metal ions in half cells that do not contain a metal electrical contact of the solution is made by using platinum wire or platinum foil as an electrode 
This is something we have already done uh, in the standard hydrogen electrode or she. So this point should not be difficult for you. Also in the diagram on the right hand side, you can see that in case of non-metals, we are using a platinum wire and a proper platinum foil as an electrode. The redox equilibrium is established at the surface of platinum. The platinum electrode is inert. So it plays no part in the reaction. The reaction is still composed of non-metals or non-metal ions in that case. The platinum must be in contact with both the element and the aqueous solution of its ion. So let's take a look at the diagram over here. The platinum is in contact with the ions because it's dipped inside the solution. And the platinum is connected to uh, the element because the, there is a platinum wire that is connecting both sets of platinum. So take a look on the right hand side of this diagram. It's a part of solution because it is touching the solution on the left hand side of this diagram. It's actually touching the yellow layer, hence connecting the element with the solution all the way through the wires. All right. So moving on to the to continuing with the topic. Figure 20.11 shows a chlorine chloride ion half cell connected to the stranded hydrogen electrode. The voltage of chlorine chloride ion half cell is plus 1.36 volts. So the chlorine chloride half cell forms the positive terminal of the cell and the hydrogen electrode is the negative terminal. Now, in case of non-metal ions, you cannot take help from reactivity series. So what we are supposed to do is the knowledge, the previous knowledge or the knowledge about these E standard values. That's how we are going to conclude which one is going to act as an anode and which one is going to act as a cathode. Now, as I've explained it before, I'm going to ask this in the form of question from Kozema. Kozema, it's also written over here, whether you can read it out from here or whether you can give us the answer in your own words, how from this E standard value of plus 1.36, we conclude with that what chloride or chlorine power portion is. Is that a cathode or is that acting as an anode? From this value, 1.36 volts. Yes, sir. Cathode. Positive wala tha, negative wala tha. Negative wala cathode hota tha, positive wala anode hota tha. So the CL negative hamar pas anode banta hai, kyunki wo zada reactive hai. Aur iske andar zada voltage ki taraf se ja rahi hai. So uh, what would be happening to this one? Uh, would it be getting reduced or getting oxidized? Anode or cathode to aapne bata diya. Reduced ho ga. Achha, reduction anode par ho sakti hai. Uh, with that means the first part of your answer was wrong. The second part of your answer was correct. So what is this supposed to be? Cathode or anode? Final answer. Cathode. 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 Right. It is more reactive, yes. but this time we're not talking about the reactivity of metals. Here where the tricks comes in. Metals and non-metals are uh, opposite to one another. If some metal is more reactive, it would be oxidized. But if it's non-metals, if it's opposite, if it's non-metals is more reactive, it won't actually be oxidized. It will be reduced. So we have the positive and negative anode, the cathode, the concept of Fuzema, the line you have said, it won't be applied here. It will actually give you a wrong answer. So Fuzema, what do you want to perceive? You don't want to perceive that it's a positive anode or a positive cathode. Metal in case, positive and negative ki tartib aur hogi, non-metal mein ja ke wo aur ho jayegi. So a positive and negative wala jo aapne rule socha hua hai, that is only applicable to metals. Thik hai? Yaha aap is tarah se perceive kar lehen. A higher positive value means that it is easier to reduce in case of non-metals. Thik hai? So in this case of non-metals, it would become the cathode. So it's easier to reduce, the reduction will happen at chlorine, while the oxidation reaction will happen at hydrogen. So the values from the values, that is what we gain. And also that is written over here. Take a look at the three pointers, three bullet points over here. Let's go through them one by one. The E standard values show us that chlorine molecules are easier to reduce than hydrogen ions. So there is a more positive value over here. So the second point states that chlor chlorine molecules are more likely to gain electrons than hydrogen ions. So they are reduced. 
So the chlorine ions will gain electrons, or they are reduced, and the hydrogen half cell will lose electrons, so they are oxidized. Okay? In this case, hence this structure, and hence our uh, calculations or our observations from this case. But, but there is more to it. When we are performing this experiment, and as you can see the diagram, so Alvan just joined us. Alvan, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay? Alvan, the right-hand side of this diagram, uh, the right-hand side diagram of this screen right now is giving you actually two gases, chlorine on the left-hand side, hydrogen on the right-hand side, and in both compartments, we can see bubbling. Okay. So in this case of bubbling, what would be the color of gas in the chlorine compartment? Yellow, uh, green, yellow, sir, yellowish green. Yellowish green or what we call pale green. Okay. That was the color that we expressed for chlorine. Very good work, Alwan. Hosema, on the other Please side, sir. on the other compartment, what would be the bubbles, the color of the bubbles? Colorless. Colorless. Why? Hydrogen. 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 Because hydrogen is colorless. Very good. So this is a part of visible observation, which was actually a part of IGCSC. is not quoted over here, but they may at any point ask you a very simple question from IGCSC as well. So keep that in mind. Apart from all the science we are studying in electrochemistry, the possible vis visual or physical observation or the naked eye observation can still be a part of the question. Do not forget that. Now, coming to question number 13, uh, the structure and diagram is given over there, here, and we can always answer the question according to the diagram. Okay? So I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. Ali, a question from you. The left side of this whole thing, uh, the compartment, okay, is positive. That means the sulfur, which has a value of 0 0.51 volts, would that be plus or minus according to the equation? Uh, sir, positive, okay. Sulfur cathode. Okay, very good. Which means as an, ex as an explanation, which one of what I'm about to say is true? Sulfur is easier to reduce or sulfur is less likely to reduce? Which one's true? Easier Ali. to reduce. Easier to Self reduce. Very good. Good work, Ali. So I hope everyone in the class understands the answers that Ali has just given us. And those are both correct, actually. All right, good. If you understand that, let's move on to the next page. And let's move on to the last scenario in which the half cells consist, contain the ions of the same element in different oxidation state. This time we're talking about ion-ion system but they are present in different oxidation states. Okay? Half cells can contain two ions of different oxidation states derived from the same element. For example, a mixture of iron-3 and iron-2 ions can be used uh, to form half cells using a platinum electrode. But here, I have a question for you guys. Let's ask the question from Roma. Roma, what was the color of iron-3 ions as we started back in IGCSE? Brown. Sir, dirty green. Iron three. Roma. Brown. Red brown. Right. And yes, uh, red brown, sure. dirty green color was for? Fe2 positive. Right. Fe2 positive. So one of them will show uh, us a red brown solution and one of them uh, will show us a dirty green or a blackish green solution. Take care. We use the platinum electrode. Why do we use the platinum electrode? We have discussed this thing way too many times. And you know, the inertness of platinum electrode is actually important over here. In this type of cell, the concentration of each ion present is one mole per decimeter cube. Uh, standard conditions, that's easier to understand, uh, shows the setup for the cell. This figure shows the setup of the cell. Okay. Take a look. Now, at one point, we have one mole per decimeter cube solution of Fe3 positive and one mole per decimeter cube solution of Fe2 positive. So there is a mixed solution. Uh, and on the other side, they, we have connected it to Xi. Okay. 
Now, what would happen over here? The, as you can see, the voltage of the half cell is plus 0.77 volts for iron positive three ions to iron positive two ions conversion. What would you be able to say? Uh, let me ask this question from Ali. Ali, you ask uh, Iron plus three gains an electron to form iron plus two. The E standard value is plus 0 0.77, which means this reaction I means iron three is less likely to reduce or more likely to reduce? More likely to reduce. Uh, more F3 likely two to reduce. All right, more likely to reduce. Very good. Okay. Some reactions involves several ionic species. For example, manganese four ions reaction is given over here, which is done with potassium uh, manganate seven or potassium permanganate, what we used to call it as a common name. So the H positive ions included, sorry, the H positive ions included because they are essential for the conversion of manganate seven ions to manganese two ions. This is another experiment that we can perform. It will include, uh, half cells will include MnO4 positive and Mn2 positive ions in one part compartment of the half cell and the other one will contain H positive ions. And then that compartment which contains MnO4 negative and MnO2 positive will also contain H positive ions as those are important for the conversion as mentioned above. Okay. So these three will be present over here. Take a look at the diagram and what I just told you, uh, the same thing is given on, on the diagram. On one compartment, we have manganate ions or Mn plus positive two ions and hydrogen ions because all of them are needed on one side. And then on the other side, we have the pure she, I mean standard hydrogen electrode connected. Okay. In this case, we see the value of 1.52 volts okay, of these ions. So what does that tell you? Would that value, E standard value, will be in positive or negative for this reaction? And I'm going to ask this question from Fazema. Please, sir. G. The equation is this one. Manganese plus hydrogen plus electrons gives us Mn positive two ions and four uh, water molecules. And the value given over here in, in the voltmeter is 1.52 volts. My question to you is when I'm going to write an equation with each standard value, would that value be positive or negative? G positive positive, positive okay. Then another question, Kuzama, from you. If that value is positive and your answer is correct, would that mean the manganate ions are easily reducible or not? Less likely to reduce or more likely to reduce? Less likely to reduce. Okay. Uh, because the other word is likely. Understandable. Let's ask Roma. Roma, are you there? Roma is not there. Alvan, you here? Yes, yes, sir. Always here. Okay. Alvan, uh, tell me whether any of the answers from Fuzema were wrong. First one or the second one or both of them or both of them are correct. What would you say? Said they were correct. Both correct? Okay. Ali, same question. Same question that I asked from Alvan. So second second answer Jadia were wrong. The magnet right. easier to and, reduce. Hoga. Right. Hosema, I was actually repeating the same question which I previously asked from Ali. I was repeating the same question with you. Take a look. If in this case, in the case of iron, the value is larger positive value. Uh, so you can jump right in and uh, you would understand the whole thing. Okay? So I keep getting disconnected. Sorry. That, that's fine. It's all right. It's all right. Uh, you will get the video, so that's fine. Please keep following the playlist. And in case of disconnections or any errors, just make sure that you get the whole lecture. If you still have a question, you may ask it in the, on the next day in the next lecture. Now, let's take a look at this equation. 
if in this equation iron plus 3 when gains an electron and is converted into iron 2 and the e standard value is a positive value that means it is easier to reduce so in the same way for this manganate, uh, manganate equation if it is getting some electrons and being converted into mn plus 2 oxidation state and the e standard value uh, let me go to the diagram e standard value is plus 1.52 volts as told us by Kozema which was actually the correct answer but I asked Kozema whether it's more likely to reduce or less likely to reduce his answer less likely to reduce was wrong it's more likely to reduce if the value is in positive it's more likely to reduce the voltage in the voltage like the voltage mille is melty and number one number two and yes higher the positive value more easier to reduce that's what we have been talking about clear I hope Al Alvan and Kozema you both now understand the your mistakes and you are uh, completely clear are we yes okay good uh, so moving on to the next part, calculating complete E0 values or E standard values using E standard values to pre predict cell voltage. Now, in order to predict the entire voltage of cell, how many, how many volts is this cell is going to produce? Because then we can actually market the cell, we can produce the cell, we can uh, sell the cell. I mean, we can actually sell it for a profit in terms of money. Okay? If we can calculate the entire cell voltage. In order to do that, we're going to use the E standard values to predict the entire cell voltage. Okay? So how are we going to use these E0 values to calculate the voltage of electrochemical cell made up of two half cells, even when neither of them is a standard hydrogen electrode? This point is important. Previously, what we have been doing is that we take, took a half cell and we connected it to standard hydrogen electrode or she. What if we are supposed to collect connect two cells with one another. This one compartment of iron is connected to one compartment of this manganate system. What happens then? Okay. The video is about to disconnect. We'll do the rest of it in the next video. Take five minutes off. Come back right after. Thank you.